Hey, what's up, you guys? So, today is a new video. Today is April 2nd, 2020, and it's currently 2.25. And today, April 2nd, is a very important day for a lot of people in our world. If you're wondering why, well, I will tell you. So, today, April 2nd, is Aut National Autism Awareness Day. And the month of April is National Autism Awareness Month. And a lot of people that I know are diagnosed with some form of autism, some, some way, somehow, some form, they are diagnosed with autism. And hundreds of thousands of people are diagnosed with autism every year don't fact check me on that because i really don't know the number I'm just guessing but regardless lots of people get diagnosed with autism in some way in some form of autism every single year and some people struggle with autism every single day including myself so, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is a which is a lower level form of autism, when I was officially when I was four years old, and I only well I was officially diagnosed when I was four, and I never really knew about it until I was like thirteen. Um, I always knew that there was something a little bit off with me because I never really, you know, communicated with anybody. Like, I was very, like, social distant. Um, I never, I didn't really have many friends growing up. And while I do have a lot more friends now than I did before, I still struggle with, you know, trying to talk to people, trying to get things out. And it's a struggle every day. So the dictionary definition is autism is a de developmental order disorder characterized by difficulties with social interaction and communication and by restricted and repetitive behavior. Now, there are many different symptoms to treatment to autism like like inappropriate social re interaction, poor eye contact, compulsive behavior, and there are so much more. And Autism can affect you developmentally, too, like with learning disabilities or speech delays. I remember my mom telling me that I didn't say my first word until I was like two or three. And now I can't stop talking. But there are a lot of struggles that people go through with autism every single day of their life. And it's not, we shouldn't not just celebrate autism for one day we should celebrate it every not really celebrate it but become aware of autism like i know that today is autism awareness day but we shouldn't just be aware of it for one day out of every single year or one month every single year we should aw be aware of it every day because millions of people struggle with autism every single day of every single month of every single year and, you know, I will, I would admit, I will admit it, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it really does suck to have autism. But I think having some form of autism is what really makes me me, if you get what I mean. Like, my buddy Avery, he has autism too, and shout out, shout out to Avery, um... And I would say that me and Avery are similar in our own ways. Um, and some of the some of the kind of quirks of having autism are we are fixated on something on a certain thing. Like my like I like I love music. I love Mickey Mouse, obviously. Um, pentatonics. Like you get fixated on stuff. So, let me just look up something real quick. So, there are many signs of autism. 
like I'm reading an article here from medicinenet.com. Um, if you want to read this article, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but here are some symptoms. Abnormal tone of voice, avoidance of eye contact or poor eye contact. Like whenever I'm filming a video like this one, I always have trouble with keeping my eyes on the camera. Like I'm always looking around doing something. And I always do that with every single time I talk to somebody. Like I can never just look at somebody in the eyes. Like I'm doing right now, it's I'm having, tr like it's troubling, not troubling, but I have trouble keeping eye contact with somebody. And that's something I struggle with every single time I talk to somebody. Even when I'm talking to my own family, I struggle to keep eye contact. Another one is is lack of empathy. Like, like I notice this all the time. When somebody's upset, I don't realize that they're upset until I ask them, "Hey, what's going on? What, what's like, what, what's going on?" You know it. Like, the lack of empathy. Like, I have experienced this so much over the past 17 years. Well, actually, no, 13 years of being alive. Um, having the lack of empathy for somebody. But once I know what's going on, I, I feel like the empathy comes. Like, it's like blossoms. Um, another sign is repeating words or phrases. Now, this is something I do all the time. Like, I repeat stuff all the time. I, re I, I do. I do repeat things, especially when I'm talking, like, like slow or fat, pre preferably fast. I'm, when I talk fast, I tend to repeat stuff that I already said. Um, this one, this next one I'm going to read is a big one. Not engaging in play with peers. And this... This ties in very nicely with with social withdrawal, social withdrawal, and and problems with two way conversation, because growing up, I had a very hard time making friends, and I'm very lucky to have the friends that I have now, but. Growing up in elementary school, I had a very difficult time making friends. And honestly, I still have difficulty making friends. Even though I have many friends now, that doesn't mean uh, that I won't make more in the future. Like, the friends that I have now, they can, they will stay fr friends with me, with me forever. But, like, when I go to college or live on my own, I'll... I will start making friends, well, try to, on my own. Like, it was very difficult for me to make friends. I had to be handheld to try to make my first friend. And it was very hard because, well, I always have problems with communication with people. Um... Like, when trying to talk to somebody, I always just get so nervous. Like, whenever whenever I used to go hang out with my friends, I'd always get so incredibly nervous that I would, like, say the wrong thing or, or not say anything at all. Like, at the beginning of every hangout, I'd always be so nervous and shy away by myself. And by the end of... By the end of the hangout, I'd always be like, you know, hanging out, hanging out with everybody else. It kind of slowly became more comfortable. Like in the beginning, it'd be not very comfortable at all. And at the end, it'd be comfortable. But it would never ever stay that way with any future hangout. Like it would always reset to be less comfortable, like very uncomfortable to extremely comfortable. So, it was difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, intense focus on one topic. Of course, I, of course, this is something I do all the time. Intense focus on one subject. Like, 
Like, I have a Mickey calendar. I have a Mickey blanket. Well, a Walt Disney World blanket, but... It is a Dis it is a Mickey blanket. Um, I have tons of Mickey things around my house and around my room and around my car. Um, at other times, I'd be fixated on pentatonics or roller coasters, but I never found this to be a problem at all. I never found being being immensely focused on one topic to be a problem for me. Like, I, if there's something I like, then I'm going to keep liking it until I start losing interest. And when I say losing interest, I say, like, like I'll move on, but then eventually I'll start coming back to this. Like, I used to collect, well, I s technically still do, like, I love Disney. You know this. I love Disney. And I don't think that'll that is something that'll ever go away. But I don't think it'll ever like disappear. Yeah. It'll never disappear from my mind. Disney will never disappear from my mind. But I also feel like it could it could be it could fade out but then become super relevant to me again in the future. But I never found being focused on one topic a problem. So, being diagnosed with autism, it really, I really struggled growing up, but I feel like I've made immense progress with, with overcoming, overcoming fears of, of not making any friends. I have tons of friends. Tons of people who absolutely love love me because I am I am who I am, and it's very important that I continue to be who I am because there'll be I will change, but I know that having autism will never go away. There, like people may say that people may think that. Autism can be treated. It can be treated, but it's something that can never go away. It's not cure. You can't cure somebody of autism. It'll just, it'll be something that sticks with you for the rest of your life. There's no stopping it. It'll just stay with you for the rest of your life. And you know what? I I'm, I'm happy. I've always been happy being myself, being the way I am, I'm just very happy with everything. But especially not with the coronavirus and staying with my house. But I'm just, I'm a happy person. You can't change me from being a happy person. So pretty much in conclusion, um, I have autism had it since four years old. Um, the type of autism I have is called Asperger's Syndrome. Um, if you'd like to Google it, the, it's spelled A-S-P-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E and then click on it. And I am proud of who I am, who I have become, who I am becoming, and I am just really excited to see what the future comes for me. And, you know, just the future of going to college, meeting new people, starting my own, being independent in the world. Because all of this is very exciting to me. Like, being a, like, once I get into college and once I start living on my own, I will have to learn to become a true independent person. And with most, with some people on autism, it can be very hard. But I will tell you this. You will be able to go overcome your battles, no matter what your battle is. At one point, you will be able to overcome your battles. And if you want to learn more about autism, I highly, highly recommend you go to autism. 
autismspeaks.org, there will be a link in the description to go check out the website, learn learn some new stuff about autism that I did not mention in the video in this video, but I highly recommend you go check out the the website and consider making a donation to Autism Speaks. And there are many many more autism autism like organizations, but Autism Speaks is the one I like the most because because I've learned a lot about autism from there and learning from my mom. So, so go check out Autism Speaks. I will put a link in the description. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing and punching the bell so you so you get notified about whenever I post another video. Um, concerning the future, um, I did not make a video yesterday, obviously, um, because I had to work and I had no idea what I was going to do for April Fool's Day. But there will be some new vi new content coming in the near future, so just stay tuned. Stay tuned to my socials, and until next time, bye bye. So, I just looked up on this web on a search of autism, and I saw that more than 200,000 people in the U.S. get diagnosed with autism every single year. And this treat- there are- there is treatment for it, but unfortunately this condition can never be cured. If there is no cure, I don't even think anybody has been cured for it. And this- and autism can be chronic. Um, just letting- this is just some- bonus stuff after, after filming I searched it and this is it anyway check out autism speaks I really really recommend you going on that website and learning more about autism anyway I will see you guys next time bye